Alex, today we got a chance to hear from head coach Bill Belichick, his annual pre-draft press conference. Uh, Bill Belichick doesn't usually speak at any point earlier on in the offseason, even when there is a combine. So this was the first time that we heard from Bill since the free agency frenzy, since all the moves this offseason. And he spoke about the draft, not obviously in detail about any specific prospect, but he did say some interesting things that I think we're going to use tonight in our mock draft to sort of look too much into all of this stuff as we normally do, read between the lines and, and try to come away with what exactly he was getting at the First thing, which I believe was a question. Well, from do you want to ben- pull the draft down so we don't spoil oh. what we're going to do? Oh, good point. <laughs> you, good point. All right. So go. the first thing was a question by Ben Volan, I believe, of the Globe, asking Belichick, how much stock are you going to put in the 2020 tape, given the pandemic, given the situation that we had this past season where everybody's playing in-conference games. Some teams played a full season. Some teams played half a season. Ohio State and Justin Fields, for example, played, what, six, seven games this past year. Yeah, Alabama, right. Alabama played an entire year. It's worth the games in the SEC and then the college football playoff and national championship. So I thought that it was a very interesting answer from Coach Belichick that he feels – like there's a bigger emphasis going into this draft for them, for the Patriots internally on the 2019 season. And I think what he felt like was that the leaps that we saw from certain players and uh, one uh, tweet pointed out that maybe he was talking about guys like Zach Wilson, for example, who really improved dramatically from 2019 to 2020, given the circumstances, given the opt outs, everything that we all know about that happened with the pandemic, maybe not, as telling as it would be in past years when guys make those big leaps. Uh, Coach Belichick still did say, hey, you know, they guys improve year to year, right? right? And there's still improvement that we have to tra- trace, but we feel like apples to apples comparison 2019 tape is a little bit more accurate to, let's say, the 2018 class or the 2017 class. If we're going to stack those classes together, it would be more accurate to go off 2019. The other thing that was interesting was he was asked by Phil Perry about value and just sort of looking at, okay, maybe we have uh, – Phil was asking specifically about quarterbacks. Bill said that this applied to all positions. Let's say we have a guy graded uh, in somewhere in the back end of the first round, but he's at a position where there's a big drop-off, right? So if we don't get him here – and we're not going to be on the clock again in time to get him later, then we're already going to be off into the lower ends of the spectrum at that respective position. So both of those things, pointing heavier emphasis emphasis to the 2019 tape where everybody had a normal season. And the second thing, certainly quarterback value, I think is going to play a role here where they might look at it and say, okay, if we don't, trade up a little bit to get Justin Fields. If we don't take Mac Jones here, the next guy on our board is Kellen Mond, who we have rated as a third or a fourth round pick. And he's going to be somebody that we're going to have to then entertain at 46 because we didn't get our quarterback in the first round or whatever equation you want to go with. Uh, What were your biggest takeaways from uh, Bill today though? Yeah. So I thought he gave a really good answer just kind of on the strategy of it. Not so much of, of the players themselves, but once that information is in from the scouts, once they have right all the reports in front of them, it's how do they navigate the draft itself in terms of how do you prepare for each pick? How do you know maybe when to trade up, when to trade down, all of that? I personally find that fascinating. That's my favorite part of the offseason is, is you know not the scouting, but the draft itself and how teams maneuver, how teams plug and play with that. Um, and then, of course, as I tweeted about, he mentioned as a hypothetical – you know, maybe there's a player who you thought was going to go at six or seven and falls to 12 or 13 and you talk about trading up. Those are pretty specific numbers for a hypothetical bill. And I know he said that he was picking them at random, but you, did throw you, that ever, talk, you ever talk about something that's kind of in the back of your head and you maybe let it slip. So I choose to read the tea leaves here. Look, it probably means nothing, but it's the silly season. Let's, let's, in, let's indulge ourselves with that. I, I think they've had serious discussions about trading up now. 11 and 12 is probably too low for a quarterback. Frankly, if the guy's falling to 11, you're going to move up higher than 11 to get him, right? If that makes sense. Um, I think even if it's the Patriots, they're not going to let one of those top five guys fall that far. But I do believe they're having serious discussions about that. Now, again, whether it's for quarterback, whether it's for a lot of people suggested potentially Micah Parsons, that's another conversation. But uh, 
I thought that that was interesting that he actually put some numbers on the table, which he traditionally doesn't do. Right. Sometimes when we get into these conversations uh, with Bill, he'll say, okay, well, we're picking at 31. So there's no way that we're going to trade up to three, right? That that's totally right. off the table today. He sort of set parameters for what I feel like would be something like a small trade up. If the right guys start right. slipping, I think in the he, he kind of established, cause he mentioned trading down too. And he mentioned the 20th pick. And I think they see 10 to 20, is their range. Right. They want to pick somewhere between 10 and 20 and where that ends up being is going to be dictated by a number of factors. A lot of which we won't know until we get to the 10th pick. They won't know until they get to the 10th pick, but I, I don't think they're locked. I think they are far from locked into that 15th pick. Yeah. And I, just to reiterate again, connecting the dots between his two answers of putting a further emphasis, a heavier emphasis, excuse me, on the 2019 season for these prospects, knowing what they all went through in 2020. And then also coupling that with the conversation about the trade ups and if a guy that you thought was going in the top six or seven falls to 12 or 13, maybe we start to have these conversations. And that's something that I think is really interesting because Trevor Lawrence is a lock for number one pick. Zach Wilson's probably the lock for the number two pick. And it kind of feels to me like he sort of doesn't understand the hype around a guy like Zach Wilson, who had an okay 2019 season and had a superb 2020 season. And I think that that does apply in a lot of ways. And we talked about this before we started recording to Mac Jones as well, right? That Mac Jones after the 2019 season, probably looking like somebody that's like a second, maybe third round pick. He has a Heisman caliber year for Alabama last year in a weird year. And then all of a sudden now he's in the conversation at three for San Francisco. Those guys that made those types of significant leaps, I'm not saying that the Patriots wouldn't take them at 15, but I think that maybe we can rule out based off of what Belichick said, a trade up into the top five picks, for instance, or something like that for a guy that really starred just last year. You know, they, they really want a guy that was also good in 2019. And a lot of people that you talk to would actually say that Justin Fields was even better in 2019 for Ohio State than he was in 2020. And obviously, Trey Lance's only season as a starter for North Dakota State was in 2019. So if you want to right. really look into it, it kind of puts those two guys a little bit higher, I would say, in the Patriots rankings than necessarily what you know, Mac Jones or Zach Wilson might be there as well. I agree. And it, it kind of, as we get into this draft now, that's the strategy right. tonight, Evan, if you want to pull up the board. So yes. we have this board here. Uh, it took me forever to get this with the simulator on PFF. The idea was that we wanted to play with is in, in, in the prompt for tonight is let's see what happens. If Justin Fields falls. Now you see Lance there at three it, reports right now, are that's Mac Jones, the whole, thing that we wanted to discuss, you know, that can be whoever it can be Lance or Jones for the point of this exercise. We're going to jump in with the seventh pick and Justin Fields is still on the board. And that's where we want to go. And Evan, we've been in this spot before last week. We tried to trade up uh, uh, four quarterbacks went early. We tried to trade up for the fifth. We thought we could wait one more pick. We didn't get him. And the first pick we did, we wanted Trey Lance at seven. We couldn't get him there. We thought eh, maybe, you know, him and Fields were on the board. The Lions will probably take Fields and move down to eight. And we moved one de down one pick and we didn't get the guy we wanted. So I would say, let's go for this. Let's get aggressive. Let's. Let's do what we need to do to get Justin Fields right now, because I don't think we can meander with this. I don't think we can bargain with this, but if a guy that talented gets to this point, I think it's worth giving up what you got to give up to get him. Yeah. And I think that really what the, the biggest thing that I took away from Belichick's press conference today was really about that value conversation that he had answering Phil Perry's question about how, look, we might have Justin Fields and Mike Lombardi talked about this. He said the Patriots, aren't going to have Justin Fields rated high enough to trade all the way up to four to draft him at four. But let's say they think projecting wise that Justin Fields is going to be worth the seventh pick in the draft someday right. a year from now, they're going to look back on that. Like the chiefs did with Patrick Mahomes and say, we made a great pick here. So let's say value wise, they think that Justin Fields down the road is eventually going to be worth that. And if they feel that way, then they are going to look at it and say, okay, well, the, the drop-off from Fields to Mond is so significant, or Fields to Trask, however they have it rated in the second round, that this is worth it to us because of the drop-off. Now, the other thing that he mentioned well, – let, 
Uh, let's let's keep in mind too, because you mentioned the ranking there. That was said before what Bill said today. We talked about how Bill felt, yeah. right? What he said about the 2019 tape. I I think that they have Justin Fields as their number two quarterback on the board. If you can get if you can get the number two quarterback on the board at seven, I think they'd see that as value, especially in this draft. Right. And the other thing that he mentioned was that the guys that have really been at the forefront of the Patriots draft process, who are Dave Ziegler, Elliot Wolf, and of course, Matt Groh, their national scout. All three of those guys have now seen Justin Fields throw in person at a yep. pro day or at his second pro day the other day, along with Josh McDaniels. So Josh McDaniels, Matt Groh, Elliot Wolf, and uh, Dave Ziegler have all seen Justin Fields at this point. That's the only quarterback prospect in this draft that you can say that all four of those guys have attended a day for in person. The other ones, Belichick himself is at Alabama. I don't know how much we put into that. It's Nick Saban's pro day. He's probably going down there to hang out with his buddy anyway. That's a ple- you know? that's a pleasantry at that point. Right, exactly. So I don't know how much we stock we actually put in Bill actually showing up to Alabama to see Mac Jones, who did not have a very good pro day, by the way, throwing the football against the air for whatever ever that is worth. Yeah.